Welcome back, mutants. Screebo here with you from mutantbill.com. It's time for my ongoing commentary for C for Chaos, the web series. Chica -chica. Um, you should know the score by now. Let me usher the cat out right quick. Go on out, baby. I'm being loud as soon as I hit record. <clears throat> that's, that's the way it goes, isn't it? Which is why I waited to hit play on this <laughs> before I started talking to you guys so I can deal with all the nonsense going on around me. Uh, Secret Chaos began in uh, 2003. We had our first casting. Started shooting in March of 2004. Continued with principal photography until December of 2006. And spent the next two years in editing until we just edited into the ground and realized it was, this wasn't going to work as a movie. Um, you know, nine, ten years later and a whole lot of heartbreak, <laughs> we've decided to release it as a web series. So our editor-in-chief, Johnny Brento, is taking my cut of the film and trimming it down into bite-sized web series pieces, which is what leads us to, to today and episode four. So let's get going. Hitting play now. Here we have that fantastic opening animation provided by Johnny Brento with uh, the, the opening narration from Martin Bowes, a patrician, uh, who did a fantastic job on this. Uh, we were going to try to get him to do the narration for the rest of the film. It's only like one page of dialogue, but he's too busy to do it, so we're going to have to find somebody else to do all that. So that's all cool, but, but Martin's awesome. If you ever need him to do music or anything like that, they are for hire. You can find them over at uh, attrition.co.uk. So thank you for doing that for us, Martin. And here we are zooming into the planet Earth. I just, just love the ominous tone of uh, this intro. Boom. See for chaos. The web series. And again, this is the uh, the trim down version. Uh, this uh, this episode is still early in the film. It was early in shooting. This was the first. This scene in the comic shop was the first scene that we shot, and uh, in a lot of ways, it was it was part of our film school. There are a lot of technical errors involved. Um, a lot of non-actors involved. We had, you know, just a, a core group of two or three actors with experience that were trying to kind of pick up everybody else. And here we see we see Art, played by Scott Thomas, talking to Jacob Johnson. They're making an exchange here, and uh, just a little bit of little bit of plot set up, a little bit of thematic set up here going on. And again, we see more uh, wacky antics from. Kilroy, played by Stephen Tucker, and uh, yeah, this scene, uh, it, it's its cool to me, it brings back a lot of memories, um, you know, shooting in that comic shop, but I also, you know, I frequented that shop for, you know, like 15 years or so until it, until this real doofus kind of took over, and he used to smoke in the store, and one day I had to kind of threaten him for smoking um, on my books, and uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was about to punch his lights out. Um, it's just like, look, you're running a comic shop. You're going to smoke in the store. How dumb do you have to be? Fortunately, it didn't come to that, though I did give him quite a severe tongue lashing. So he ran over and belly bumped me when I was trying to walk out the door. And I took my glasses off. And I said, do that again. I was about to slam his head into the wall. Um, fortunately, he turned around and, and walked away from me as fast as he could. But... It's a sad state of affairs, and you have to do that at your comic book shop, but that's why I stopped going. It was sad that they had to sell out to that doofus. He had no respect for the genre, no respect for the art form. And uh, that's what makes these early scenes cool. I was just trying to trying to promote the genre, trying to promote the art form. You know, here Art mentions sequential illustration. You know, he doesn't call it, you know, drawing comics or whatever, or drawing funny books. You know, but he talks about it as an actual art form. And a lot of this stuff that Art says is just, he's just a mouthpiece for me. And oh, here we go. Here we have Bella, played by the lovely Ms. Amy Lauder, who's actually the second actress to play this part. We actually had to recast the first actress. For some reason, she flipped out on me. Not Amy, but the uh, previous actress, where she had filmed this scene, and then uh, you know when I tried to get in touch with her about filming the rest of her scenes, she's she's kind of like went crazy and said I was cutting her part and this and that, 
what she didn't understand is I had not sent her the rest of her scenes. You just kind of give people a few pieces here and there to see how they're going to react before you get fully in bed with them. Because you get fully in bed with somebody that's crazy, you're up, you're up a creek without a paddle. And uh, she went crazy. I told her, thank you. We'll uh, move on without you. Recast her. And uh, here we go. Got Amy Lauder, very experienced theater actress from the Charlotte area, who did a fantastic job with this role. Um, here she is. She's supposed to be the lady in red. Again, that's symbolic of Art's, Art's love for her, or lust, or whatever you want to call it. The uh, the sappy love stories you see in my movies are always reflections of the beatings that I take in my relationships. I'm a normal guy, you know, like anybody. I'm not a tough guy or anything. Sure, I've you know, done martial arts and all that kind of stuff, but I avoid street fights and everything. But it's like anybody, man. I can get laid low by women. They just they come in and they tell you what you want to hear, and once they get you on the hook, you're done. They you're done. They crush you. They rip your heart out and stomp on it. But that's life, isn't it? So I always channel that stuff into my scripts, and you see a bit of that here. Uh, and part of that is your books, your movies, your stories, they should be time capsules of your life. They should have pieces of you in it in order to have something real. Now here you see, uh, well, you saw it just a second ago. This is my good buddy Frankie, who actually worked in the comic book shop. And he took over this role at the last minute because I had written it for another friend of mine, Pete, who's, who's a black guy. And uh, the role of Paula here, played by uh, Latonica, was actually supposed to be a white girl. So it's supposed to be a black guy with a white girl. The actress fell through. I had to get a new actress, which wound up being Latonica here. And then Pete wound up in jail. Sorry, Pete. But <laughs> so I had to recast him, too. So it wound up, instead of being a black guy and a white girl, it wound up being a white guy and a black girl. And uh, so, so the dialogue was written for, you know, it was kind of weird the way it comes across now because it was written for a different kind of character. Um, but Frankie did a good good job with this. He just jumped in with both feet. Frankie's a cool guy. He was... He was always recommending the best books to me at the comic book shop. I really, really dug him. And uh, he's gone on to do, like, like racing and all kinds of cool, crazy stuff. So, very cool stuff. And this scene is just just continuation of introduction of all the main characters in the movie. You know, again, this is supposed to be a supernatural slasher slash black comedy. Um, so, that's why we have kind of these wacky dialogue sequences and... And all this. Uh, there we just saw uh, we just saw Farrell get slapped, played by Frankie. And um, that was before we really knew how to properly do <laughs> stage fighting. And we just had her slap him. And <laughs> she slapped the dog mess out of him. <laughs> oh, it was bad. So a lot of those reactions you see were actually <laughs> were real. People were like, whoa, she slapped the crap out of him. Um, and here you see uh, Tony Rogers enter as Mr. Smith. And of course... You have the ominous, menacing music playing in the background. and Gosh, I just threw so many motifs into this movie. There you can see Art's picking up some books off the floor. And I threw some independent books out there just to, to give a shout out to some indie guys. Um, you can see it when Mr. Smith comes in and he moves a piece on the chessboard. Again, this, that's one of the motifs I have at play throughout the music, the throughout the movie, the uh, the chessboard and the pieces pop up later. Because again, it's all it's all tied together. This is a real kitchen sink movie, you know. And I, I did that intentionally. I just felt like the margin for error was so huge on our first feature length project. I mean, we had done short films before that, but once you dive into feature length, that's a real commitment, and you're really, you're really going in the deep end. But I just thought the margin for error was so large that um, I thought, let's let's make it as big and bloated as possible. I just put everything I can into it in terms of symbolism, in terms of motifs, in terms of themes at play, um, it's in terms of just wacky dialogue, you know, whatever over-the-top kill sequences we could come up with. Now, there's a difference between what we came up with and what wound up on screen, because then you had, okay, what effects can we get? What will the actors actually do? And sometimes we had instances where the actors did not want to do what I needed them to do. Um, we'll, we'll encounter that in later episodes. But I just thought, let's make this thing as crazy and bloated as possible, because at the absolute worst, if we get to the end of it, and we have all this crazy stuff, we can take it, trim it down, and then boom, 
we, we've, we've got something we can work with. And that's where we are now. We, we've trimmed it down to being a web series, and, and that's how we're making it work. So, um, you know, Tony is one of the one of the guys in here with acting experience in this scene. So, you know, he he did a really good job with this. We we found a lot of intentional humor in this for some reason between the in the dialogue between Tony and uh, Scott. I just talked over the whole thing, but um, that was actually Rick the the comic shop owner gave him a little cameo there and actually had a huge sequence of dialogue between Rick and, and um, Jacob Johnson but uh, you know Phil's not an actor Rick's not an actor and when I saw Rick had he was so nervous just about being on screen I just said forget it there's no way I can get him to do this dialogue so we just we just threw it out and that, that actually gave a lot of the setup for the whole collector's backstory. I don't want to give too much away, but um, again, here we see Ronnie Cruz playing Coy, who is the local local boy made good. He's gone off to draw comics for the big companies, and here he is talking to Mr. Smith, who's a comic book publisher. You see our lovely ladies there. Um, they have Alice, uh, who's actually Tony's sister, back there behind him, behind Steve, actually, in that sequence. We have Adriana Munoz, who played uh, Emma, and uh, she, she was not an actress at all. She had no experience. So she did her best with these scenes. Um, Nicole Schiaparelli, who played um, Bianca, was just phenomenal for never having any acting experience. She, you know, she, the camera loves her. She just came in and stole everything she was involved in. And here we go, Jimmy. He's rattling off these numbers. I, I wanted to make a point that Jimmy was like a, a numbers nerd, almost like he was autistic. Watch for this look between Jimmy and, and Kilroy here, right there. <laughs> they were always laughing at dialogue going on and stuff. Next time on Sea for Chaos. Uh, so we're almost through this major show-stopping sequence in the comic book shop where there's so much dialogue and so much stuff going on. You just have, you know, no idea what's coming next in the story. But I, I felt like this was all necessary to set up all these people. And now we can follow them through the rest of the movie and see what happens. See how they get pulled into this this web of ritualistic murder involving the numbers killer. And then the uh, mystery comes up of, well, who is the numbers killer? Could it be this person? Could it be that person? So, lots of fun stuff going on. I love these end credits that Brento came up with. It's fun stuff. So, we got a neat little sequence here with uh, Vanell as Mutisha, the movie goddess, promoting everything. And uh, we're involved in the making of episode two of Mutisha's movie more as we speak. As of this filming, it's not a writing, it's video. So, uh, lots more fun stuff coming from MVP. As always, find us at mutantville.com. Follow us on Twitter at MVPLAYERS and uh, tell your friends about it.